Hey there, Dr. D2 here with, surprise, another adventure game, The Blackwell Legacy. It looks retro, but it's actually newer than the Runaway series, and that surprises me. Obviously, they're going for the retro look on purpose, and I'm fine with that. All I know is you play as this lady and her ghost friend, who solve a mystery. I think it's a mystery. I'm pretty sure he's a I'm pretty sure he's a detective. Let's start. Um, yeah, I... Okay. No, in addition to on-screen instructions, you can view the instructions by clicking the help button. Okay. Day one. So, I guess this is it. Years of watching and waiting and hoping, and it comes down to this. Do I love you? Do I miss you? I don't know for sure, I hardly know you. But you're the closest thing to family I've got, and I suppose that's something. Goodbye, Auntie. Wherever you are. Well, she's in the harbor now. Ominous. I like the music. Although, it, this beat does not seem to fit the background music. It's like two different tracks playing at once. What a morning. At least I'm home now. Interacting with objects. To interact with objects, just click them. There's a strange kid standing in front of Rose's door. Try interacting with him to see what he wants. I probably should turn those off because these are pretty obvious. Windows. Look at the windows. There are bars over the windows. I'm not getting in that way. There are bars over... Okay, just clicking is to undo it. That's good. I like the retro style here. And decent voice work, too. I like the animated head. Pretty cool. So what you want there, buddy? Hi there. Um, hi? So who are you visiting today? Um, it's my fucking house. Uh, laugh it off. Express surprise. Laugh it off. Oh, ha ha. Seriously, who are you here to see? Can't let you in unless you tell me. Um, I live here? No, you don't. I know everybody in the building. I don't know you. The fuck are you? Who Who the hell are you? Jim Birdo. All right. Jim, where's the regular doorman? Jeez, where have you been? He's on strike. He's what? Strike. All the building servicemen in the city are doing it. Union rules or something. I stepped in to help because I know everybody. How come nobody told me? Notices were posted all over the building. I put them up myself. If you lived here, you'd have seen them. Who pays attention to things like that? Well, that's not my problem. Uh, yeah, it is. You're blocking me from my house. Listen, I really live here. Fourth floor, number 4E. 4E. Hmm. Isn't that apartment empty? No! I live there, and I want to go there. Thank you very much. Oh. Hmm. Maybe you're telling the truth. He sees reason. Thank God. Do you have any ID? A driver's license or something? Yes. I have a driver's license. It's upstairs. In my desk drawer. Crap. <laughs> Come on, this is New York. Who actually drives? True. But I still can't let you in unless you prove you live here. Bitch, prove you work here! Threat and violence! Out of my way. I'm going in. I wouldn't do that. Why? Are you going to stop me? Me? No. But I've got a cell phone in my pocket with 911 program, Dan. All I have to do is hit send and the cops will be here in five minutes. Are you serious? Totally serious. I don't believe this. Oh, what are they gonna do? It's like, oh, it's her home. Go ahead. Show your proof. I have my apartment key. Will that do? Sorry, no. That could be any key. 
Well, let's go upstairs and see if it works. And leave the door unattended? Can't do it. Sorry. I could jab this key in your eye. Wow. I have never been so annoyed by a character so immediately. Maybe I have. There's been a lot of characters. I remember instantly being terrified by Officer Tate. State facts. Really? I live here. Nice try. I know everyone in this building, and I don't know you. Sorry. I've lived here for five years. Then how come I've never seen you, seen you before? I have no idea. Doesn't matter. If you lived here, I'd know you. That's all there is to it. You are a little shit. How long is this strike going to last? I don't know. Could be a couple hours or a couple days. Depend on whether they reach a settlement or not. I don't know the details. Um, ask for help? Okay. I have no ID, and you don't know me. What can I do to prove that I live here? Hmm. Well, can anyone in the building vouch for you? I'm not sure. I mean, I don't really know anybody here. How long have you lived here again? Be quiet. Not all of us are social butterflies. Okay, whatever. Hey, what about Nishanti Sharma? He could vouch for you. Who is this Nis... Uh, Nish... Nishanti. Nishanti Sharma. She lives in 4F. You know, right next door to 4E. You really don't get out much, do you? Your point? Nothing, but I'm sure she could vouch for you. Great, call her up. She's not here. Of course she isn't. So I gotta wait here all day for her. You might have to. Although, she usually goes to Washington Square Park in the mornings. You could look for her there. Well, obviously, I have a goal. Might as well finish talking, though. Please, I've had a really tough morning. I need to get home. Sorry, lady. Rules are rules. So, let me get this straight. You want me to go all the way to the park to look for a woman who might be there, and if she recognizes me, then, and only then, I'll be granted the privilege of entering my own home? That's pretty much it, yeah. This is really stupid. I'm not the one who forgot my ID. This is an interesting start to a game. I'll be back. See you around. Activating the inventory bar. Okay. Looking at objects. Right click over them, okay. Uh, Mr. Donald Quinton from the hospital, Miss Blackwell. My name is Dr. Donald Quinton. Quinton. And I was your aunt's primary I was your aunt's primary care for God, I can't read today. And I was your aunt's primary care physician here in Bellevue Hospital. I have seen you. I have seen to your aunt's needs since she arrived here 25 years ago. Please accept my heartfelt condolences for your loss. Feel free to visit my office at any time. I'm sure we have much to discuss. Okay. How do I get out of this? Okay, clicking off the letters. How do you get out of that? So, exit. So I can go to the park, I can go to the hospital, or I can go to the my apartment where Deuce Bag is. Well. Washington Square. It's been a while since I've been here. Still looks the same, I guess. Although the dog park is empty, I wonder why. Eh, she doesn't leave the house much. Probably spends too much time at home writing fan fiction. Only had to get out to dump the ashes in the lake. Trash can. Can't look. The dog park is empty. There's no reason to go in there. Please note, dog walking park is closed until further notice. Hmm. Wonder why. Oh, crap. That means she brings her dog here, doesn't she? That means she wouldn't be here. Well, that sucks. Hmm. Now I'm getting a stress headache. I need to get home. Why? That seemed odd. Hey, dog. I don't think so. I don't think so. What do you have against the dog? I'm not untying the dog's leash. Nishanti would kill me. Oh, it's Nishanti's dog. Okay. That's her. I recognize her from my building. Nishanti Sharma, was it? This is going to be awkward. Um, just talk to her. Oh, wow. That's weird. Uh, excuse? I can't do it. I can't just barge up to her. Not in front of all those people. They're all staring. 
I know exactly how you feel. I'm not untying the dog's leash. Nishanti would kill me. Ooh. I don't think so. Well, I can't go and talk to her in front of the people. Can't get any closer. Gotta wait for her performance to end. That is one log. How long is your leash, dog? Oops. Yeah, you keep playing. Well, only choice now is to talk to the, uh, the doctor. Why is it still playing the flute music? I have to say, one criticism is the text should have a little pause at the end before it transitions just because, you know, it's jarring when the face is up there for one word and pops away. I don't have anyone to call. Call someone in your house. Call the real doorman. A lot of people you can call in this situation, actually. Uh, ask about Dr. Quentin. I'm here to see Dr. Quentin. Uh-huh. Is he expecting you? I've got this letter right here. Okay. Looks legit. Go right in. His name's on the door. You can't miss it. Thanks. Ah, yes. This mess of- Come in. There is no name on Dr. that door. Quentin? Yes? I'm Rose Angela Blackwell. Oh, hello. Come in. Come in. You got my letter, I trust. Yes, I did. Good, good. My condolences on the loss of your mother. My parents couldn't decide between Rose or Angela, so I got kind of stuck with both. Um... Wait. Ah! Polite correction. Thanks, but she was my aunt, not my mother. Ah, quite right, quite right. So you wanted to talk to me about something? Yes, yes I did. But before we go into that, how are you holding up? Hmm. Why? I'm pretty sure in the letter he said, aunt. Is he testing her? Am I being paranoid already? It's just a story already. Uh, complain about the day. Ooh. Enter. Ah, complain about the day. Just having a really bad morning. Oh? It's... I'll get over it. Just some stuff I have to deal with. You received the ashes? Yes. I scattered them this morning. I imagine you must miss her. Honest response. To be honest, I'm not sure what to feel. It's not like I knew her. Or even remember her from... before. She's like a stranger. So why did you make it a point of visiting her all those years? Hmm. So you visited her all the time, but you didn't really know her. I'd go with family. She was the only family I had. I guess I felt an obligation like I had to. And now that you don't have to? What do you want me to say? Auntie's dead, life goes on. So you'll just keep living, is that it? Yes. Keep writing your little book reviews in the paper, right? You know about those? It's hardly a secret. A number of the staff have read them, yes. I didn't think a West Village paper would interest anyone up here. I have to be honest, Miss Blackwell. The staff read them because they were more interested in you. Hmm. I... I guess I was right. You do, just, you do spend all your time in there writing. Oh well. Um... Defensive. Okay, I am this close to leaving. Why am I here? Their intentions were purely benign, I assure you. It was your aunt they were primarily interested in. They wanted to know more about her family, and you proved to be, hmm, shall we say, less than eager to comply? That's their problem. Indeed. It was your choice to make. Your aunt was an interesting case. And now that she's gone, I was hoping you'd be more forthcoming with me. Just an informal chat. We can discuss her condition. And yours too, of course. What condition? And she's dead. How can she have a condition if she's dead? That's a pretty final condition. You never could find out what was wrong with her, huh? No, we didn't. But she still remains a fascinating case. Fascinating? I don't understand. Forgive me. I speak from a purely professional perspective. I didn't know your aunt personally. Neither did I, but fascinating? 
It might come as a surprise to you, but yes. But she was practically catatonic. All she did was lie there for 20 years. She'd sometimes twitch or mumble something incoherent, but I wouldn't call that fascinating. Well, as you know, she wasn't exactly catatonic. We kept her sedated. Right. She had outbursts. Yes, and we had to sedate her heavily to keep her calm, especially in preparation for your visits. What are you trying to say? Miss Blackwell, we are not a nursing home. We're not content to merely keep a patient comfortable. We are, after all, in the healing profession. We were trying to heal your aunt, and to do that, we had to speak to her. Wait, you spoke to auntie? We tried to. Did she answer back? After a fashion, yes. Um, what? The... You... She... You kept her sedated, but only when the family wasn't coming? Family that... That could tell... You could tell that she's being forcibly sedated to? That's shady as fuck. Right, let's go in order. Wait, what do you mean by my condition? Hereditary dementia is my specialty, Miss Blackwell. And in my opinion, there is significant cause for concern. Sorry, did you say hereditary? Yes, two generations. Your aunt and your grandmother before her. My grandmother? Yes, Patricia, I think her name was, right? I never knew my grandmother. Auntie Lauren was it. There was nobody else. She couldn't exactly provide me with the family history. Oh, I see. I had no idea. Well, maybe you should have. Did anyone else come in to visit her besides me? No, you are correct. I should have read the family history more carefully. I do apologize. I just assumed... Well, never mind. It doesn't change the fact that you should be concerned as well. Go on. Patricia Blackwell suffered her mental collapse at the age of 55. Lauren Blackwell underwent hers at the age of 40. What are you saying? That the same thing is going to happen to me? No. I'm saying that there is significant cause for concern. I don't like this. You're going to use this to try and say she's crazy when she's not. I don't trust that. You don't... I don't think crazy can be hereditary. If Auntie spoke, why wasn't I told? Miss Blackwell, do you remember what brought your aunt here in the first place? Her screaming? Her hitting herself? I was only five years old at the time. But I kind of remember. In order to prevent her from doing harm to herself or to others, we were forced to sedate her. When we limited her medication, she simply reverted to her former state. Her natural state, I'm sorry to add. What did Auntie say? Nothing that made any sense. But one thing was clear. She was in great pain. Pain? What kind of pain? It's difficult to say, but it was immense. How immense? When we reduced her medication, the transformation was dramatic. Her eyes flew open, she thrashed, her screams... Well, we had to gag her eventually. My God. I know. Did she still feel it when she was sedated? We don't know. There's no way of knowing. 25 years. I know. Poor auntie. So she's 30. Okay. That's fucked. Is that the mystery? We gotta find out what happened to the ant? Why are you only bringing up- Why are you only mentioning this after we've already burned her to cinders? Did you do an autopsy? So, I had a grandmother. Apparently so. How do you know about her? It was in your aunt's case history when she was brought to us. Patricia Blackwell's symptoms were the same, word for word. Patricia's case was severe, and she was young, but it was chalked up to being an ordinary case of dementia. Until... Until it struck her daughter. Until 20 years later, when it struck her daughter, yes. It seems impossible. Perhaps it's genetic, but we've detected no abnormality. What about... You know, her mother. What happened to her? Uh, future. So what should I do? Right now? Nothing. This type of thing is unprecedented. There is no procedure to go through, no medication I can give you. I just want you to be aware, is all. And come talk to me if, well, there's any concern. 
You couldn't find any other link between the two cases? None, aside from the family connection. And uh, a name. A name? What name? The documentation we had on your grandmother is minimal, but there was one interesting item noted. During her more lucid moments, she uttered the name Joey. Your aunt, too, would cry out that name on occasion. Joey? Yes. Who's Joey? We've been wondering the same thing for 25 years. That is... I think that's the ghost. That's the ghost. Did talking to the ghost make them go painful crazy? That would fucking suck. Is there anything else you need to tell me before I go? Your aunt had some personal effects in storage. As the next of kin, you're the beneficiary. It's just a folder, some documents and so on. It's being sent to your address via messenger. Oh, well, thanks for that. It's no problem at all. Goodbye, Miss Blackwell. My schedule is fairly open now, so feel free to drop in any time. I'm always happy to discuss my favorite patient. Sure. Favorite? I don't like the way you put that. Did you enjoy the fact that she was horribly in pain and, you know, just constantly screaming about Joey while you sedated her? That's pretty messed up, dude. I'm gonna come back here and fuck with those things. Cool. I'm guessing the performance is over now. Hey, Pooch. Oh, for heaven's sake. Oh. Don't worry, Moti. I'm coming. Oh, cool. There, all better. I can't take you anywhere, can I? Oh, it's you. The lady next door. Yeah, hi. Rhonda, isn't it? No, Rosangela. Well, Rosangela. I hope my friend here hasn't been giving you any trouble. Nah, the dog is cool. That's a cute dog you've got. <laughs> Isn't he just? Normally he behaves, but he seems to have taken a shine to you. Oh, great. Anyway, I don't think we've formally met. I'm Nishanti. Rosangela. So you said. Oh, right. Um... Yes? I have a strange favor to ask. Go ahead and ask. What are neighbors for? You know that building servicemen strike? Yes. Jim Birdo is covering, isn't he? Yeah, that's the problem, see. He doesn't recognize me. Oh? Oh. So you need me to vouch for you? Yeah, I know this is pretty stupid. Don't worry about it. Moti is getting a little cranky anyway. Let's get you home. Thanks. I can go home! Lead the way, Ooh. dog. Are you all right? I'm fine. I just need to get home. All right. Let's keep walking. Uh-oh. Suddenly that headache is ominous. Hello, Jim. Hey, Miss Sharma. Jim, this is Rosangela. She lives here. She does? Okay. Sorry about earlier. Had to be sure. Sarcastic. Well, now you're sure. And you must be so proud of yourself. Well... Never mind. Just get out of my way. Well, here we are. Yes. Finally. That stupid kid. Well, perhaps. But try not to be so hard on him. We're all neighbors, after all. Yeah, I guess. <coughs> Looks like somebody's hungry. I'd best get this spoiled puppy fed. Feel free to drop in any time you want. Polite response. I'll think about it. No thinking needed. I know we New Yorkers don't usually talk to our neighbors, but who cares? The city can be a lonely place, especially when you live alone. I've got Moti. Who do you have? I've got... Ghosts. Um, make a joke. Oh, I have three great roommates. Oh? Yes, um, their names are me, myself, and I. 
um, it's a joke. Yeah, I get it. Very funny. I'm sure you're fine. Although your episode in the park tells me otherwise. And your eyes. Well, let's just say the offer stands. Sure. You go home now. We'll see each other soon, Rose Angela, I'm sure. Hey. Yes? Um, you can call me Rosa, if you like. Rose Angela's kind of a mouthful, you know. All right, Rosa. You have a good day now. What a strange lady. She helped you get home. That works. Hmm, who's this door? Eh, let's go home. You have to deal with the crazy thing entering your head. Home. Thank God. I've never been so happy to see a 500 square foot room in my life. Be it ever so humble. Got the desk, got the TV, DVD collection. What you got? I'm not up for watching a movie. Besides, I've seen all of them a dozen times. Who buys DVDs in this day and age? Uh, overgrown plant. Stove. Cabinets. Hmm. I suppose I should trim this plant. Maybe one day. Griff is fine where he is. They'll trim the plant, you know, when it's when you're tripping over it as you cross to get the door. I don't need to touch it. I know these plants are fake. You bought them. Just commenting. I don't need to bother. I don't get reception anyway. Oh, so that's just for your Xbox. There's nothing in these cabinets I want right now. Cook? Why bother when every Chinese restaurant in the area delivers? I haven't had Chinese food in too damn long. Um, Peter. Do some writing. <sighs> I am just feeling so uninspired today. Maybe tomorrow I'll feel up to it. But today, it's just not happening. Ah, uh, no Yaoi fanfiction today. Um, trash can. I don't need to take the trash out, it's not even full. They're fine where they are. I'm not ready for bed. Then why are we here? Envelope, there we go. Looks like it's from Bellevue. Okay, check it out. Dear Lauren, so you have been at... So you have been at NYU for over two weeks now and I have not called. I am sure things are busy in the Big Apple, but don't forget the family you left behind. Things back home are well. Jack starts high school on Monday, and so he's a bit nervous. You know how he gets. Be sure to write him a letter. He misses his big sister. I admit I am still a bit nervous about your living in New York all by yourself. Are you carrying ID with you when you go out like I asked? Well, that's ironic. Holy crap, 25 pages! You know me, just being a mom. Somebody has to. Keep your head on straight, kid. As your dad would say. And remember that you have family back home that misses you. Hello sis, I'm writing this on my new St. Clair Model 15. Mom says that improving my handwriting is a lost cause, so she got me this. Keen, huh? I've already typed a few stories on it in this letter. Can't type for long because Dad says the noise drives him up the freaking wall. What does he know? So how is life in the big bad city? Troy is dead boring, as usual. Why'd you have to go to college, huh? There's nobody to talk to in this dump anymore. See you at Thanksgiving, Jacko. Okay, I guess you, it's your dad that that left you to your aunt, not him, not your mom. Okay. Dear Lauren, well, Thanksgiving time has come and gone, and so have you. In just two short months, I can already see you evolving into a capable young woman. You have outgrown this small town, Lauren. That much is obvious. Jack will be following in your footsteps soon, I am sure. Visiting you in New York is all he talks about. Speaking of Jack, I know you are worried about him. We all are. But don't feel that as your responsibility. You are his sister and you love him, but he has got to learn to live without you eventually. You are growing up, let him know, let him grow up too. Let him grow up too. Lauren, can you keep a secret? I don't want, I don't want to say this over the phone in case mom or dad over here. Mom's been acting odd lately. It started a few days after you went back to New York. She was dragging me ship. She was dragging me shopping when she suddenly screamed and fainted. 
She was pointing at the corner of the room, but there was nothing there. We brought her to the hospital. She says she's fine now, but she's been very on edge and paranoid. It's hard to explain. Can you call and try to cheer her up? She won't listen to me. Just don't tell her about this letter. Lauren, you seem concerned over the last phone call. I wanted to write to reassure you that everything is fine. Let us know when you're coming again for Thanksgiving. See, this is a good type of letter because it tells a story through subtext. I, I like this. Dear sis, mom's getting worse. You said it best during Thanksgiving. It's like somebody is watching over her shoulder. Paranoia. She sits by herself for hours, pretending to read when it's obvious she isn't. Lately, she's been covering her ears as if to keep out of sound and closing her eyes tight. Dad's losing patience with her. He's convinced she's lost her mind and I'm starting to agree. She refuses to get any kind of help. Why can't she see that there is a problem? This isn't normal. Not normal at all. Why can't she see that? I hate to admit it, but I'm kind of scared. Scared for her, I don't know what to do. Lauren, it has a name. Mom locked herself in the bathroom this morning. She sounded like she was talking to herself in there. Well, not to herself. It was like she, there was somebody else in there, but there wasn't. I listened. I couldn't understand it, but she did say the name Joey. I asked her later who Joey was, and she got really scared. She got angry and said, If you know what's good for you, never mention that name again. This could be the key. If we can find out who Joey is, maybe we can save her. Well, it's done. The final papers have been signed. It hurt. A lot. But it had to be done. Mom has now been committed to a mental ward. I have to say I am relieved to know how you feel about it, but you weren't there. You didn't come to see her screaming and tearing her hair out. Running around the house, knocking down everything in her way. Cuts were all over her face and the house was practically destroyed. I was so shocked I just closed the door and waited outside for Daddy to come home. It was awful. She clawed at him, fired his face over, and drew blood. It will haunt my dreams for the rest of my life. Thanks for coming out, Lauren. I don't think Dad and I could have handled it on our own. She kind of drained us, you know? Can I come to New York and visit? I need to get away for a while. Congratulations, summa cum laude. I always knew you were a smarty pants, sis. Now you've got the documentation to prove it. Thanks again for letting me stay at your place for the weekend. It was just like old times, except you weren't smoking then. New York is an amazing city, and Columbia has a great campus. I can't wait to move down there in September. But until then, I've got to deal with the, our grumpy old man. He's insufferable as always. Ever since mom, he's been hard to talk to, and very hard on me. I should tell him you're smoking now. Maybe then he'll concentrate on you for once. That's a dick move, dude. It happened, Lauren. Just like you eventually said it would. I'm in love. Her name is Maria. She's from Italy and we met in statistics class. She asked if she could copy my notes because her hand was tired. We ended up having lunch and we've been inseparable ever since. She's incredible. She's got the most amazing red hair and I want you to meet her. I'll come by soon. Lauren, are you alright? Ever since mom's funeral, you've been hard to reach. I know it's been hard on us, but it's been six months. I tried calling you, but you never answered. I came by the other day, but you didn't open the door. I knew you were there, Lauren. I could hear you, but... I risked using the spare key you gave me, but you changed the lock. Come for dinner on Christmas Eve, Maria. Is a great cook. Come for dinner on Christmas Eve. Maria's a great cook. We don't ask any questions. Just come here. Mom might be gone, but we're still here. I miss my big sister. Lauren, who is Joey? I went over last week to give you your Christmas gift. You didn't answer the door, but I heard you talking to somebody named Joey. Is it a boyfriend? Are you seeing a man named Joey? Is that why you dropped off the map? Or is it something else? I don't think I need to tell you that. I don't... I don't think I need to tell you what. For God's sake, talk to me. Oh, he's hoping it's not the same Joey. Lauren, I know you're annoyed, but I am not sorry. I don't, I didn't want to do it, but you have left me no choice. Hiring a private detective to follow you was the only option left. He told me some things. You won't talk to me, but you'll talk to total strangers. You'll go, ev you'll go to every far corner of the city at the strangest hours, and you talk to yourself when you think you're alone. Don't deny it. He heard it, and so did I. It's not any of, and and not that any of it made any sense. That alone is disturbing enough. 
but then he saw you collapse. You were all alone in some obscure park in the Bronx when you just fainted. He was about to call an ambulance, but then he saw you get up again and walk off like nothing happened. You were always there for me growing up. Did you shut me out, sis? Let me be there for you now. She's working with the ghost. Jacko, please stay away. Don't worry about me. There are things that need to be done, and I am the only one who can do them. Don't ask me to explain. All I can say is that I understand our mother more than ever. She was never crazy, Jacko. Trust me on this and take some comfort in it. You've grown up and you've grown tough and you don't need me... You've grown up and you've grown tough and you don't need anyone to fight your battles anymore. You don't need me, but I'll always be your big sister. Why do you have this letter you sent to him? Okay, that explains it. I am returning your letter because I refuse to accept it. No, you don't need to fight my battles. I'm not 14 years old anymore, but we are still family and that's important. Especially now that Dad has died. Look, you obviously have something going on and that's fine. I don't have to be involved if you don't want me to, to, but I still want you involved in my life. Marie and I are getting married in November. You are coming. No stupid excuses. Greetings from Greece. If there were any words to describe the beauty of this place, it still wouldn't do it justice. A perfect spot for the honeymoon. Things have been busy, as you can imagine, but I wanted to quickly write to say that I'm glad you made the wedding. Of course, I'm still worried that you could... I'm, of course, I'm still worried about you, but somebody has to be. You take care and stay in touch. Maria says hi. There are some pictures stuck to the back of this letter. Oh, that's... That was a sudden stop. You should have put that at the end of the thing. Dear Aunt Lauren. Yes, Aunt Lauren. You're an aunt. I'm a dad. Maria gave birth to a beautiful baby girl. We named her Rosangela, after Maria's grandmother. So her parents are the ones who couldn't decide. Okay. She's so quiet, she hardly cries at all. I'm all set to spoil her rotten, but Maria says to take it easy. She looks like... She looks just like her mother, and there's a bit of you in her eyes too. And mom and dad. Everything our family was or will be, this child is it. Life is changing so fast, I just want to hold on... I just want to hold on to this tiny creature and never let go. The future is an exciting place and I have everything I could ever want. I don't want anything to change, ever. And the last one is going to be noticed that they're dead. It is indeed within your legal rights to take custody of your five-year-old niece. With the death of her parents, you are the only living relative. Please contact our office and we will start the necessary papers. Yeah, I saw that coming. I mean, it's pretty obvious, but still, it's sad. Oh! Phone. I was gonna look at the photos. Hello? Rosangelina, hi. Hi, Bob. Thanks so much for submitting your last review on time. For once. Yeah. I've got a little assignment for you today. Assignment? Human interest, Blackwell. Suicide. College girl named Joanne Sherman. Well, that's awful, but... You know the Brittany house, the NYU dorm? Yes, but... Speak to some people on her floor. Get a word in with the roommate. Listen. Speak to the RA, too, and hey, see if you can score a picture of the girl. But I don't do that stuff. I write book reviews. Versatility. Time to get out of your comfort zone. Jeremy's over at City Hall covering that strike, so you are it. Get cracking. I hate him so much. Is freelancing for that stupid paper even worth it? I guess it keeps me writing, but... Oh, whatever. I'll just go over there and get it done. It's not like I don't have enough death in my life right now. Maybe this isn't a bad thing. It's like being a real reporter. Sort of. My old notepad should come in handy for this. Yeah! You get to be April O'Neil! Notebook. You can now use Rose's notebook. To access the notebook, move the cruiser over the top. Notebook. Okay. Okay, Joanne suicide in the photograph. All I oh wait, what? What was that? All I know about Joanne is that she was an NYU student who killed herself. I can compare them. My boss asked me to find a photograph of Joanne to put it in the paper. Hmm. No, I don't see any connection. That is cool. I like that a lot. It's like that computer puzzle from Still Life, only not stupid. 
I got photos to look at. Christmas. Oh, wow, your dad was a little dweeb, wasn't he? Oh, wow, she looks crazy as fuck. Nice thumb. Hmm. Wait, whoa. Huh? I don't want to ruin the picture. I don't want to ruin the picture. I thought you'd be commenting on who's who. I don't want to ruin the picture. I'm not saying ruin the picture. I'm saying, don't you want to say, hey, that's my dad, that's my mom. That's my aunt, who for some reason looks completely different than the other picture. Yeah, who's this? That's your dad, obviously. It's the same thing. I guess this is grandma. Why did... How did... Lauren completely change. That makes no sense. But whatever. I've got a suicide to investigate. To the college! <laughs>